Now, the coroner to the 7-7 inquest will report the findings of an exhaustive inquiry into the London bombings tomorrow. Once more, the focus will be on the radicalisation of the bomber's leader, Mohammed Sadiq Khan. Newsnight has an exclusive interview with a former colleague of Sadiq Khan, which sheds new light on the crucial years before the bombings when he was living in Leeds. Here's Richard Watson. We are at war and I'm a soldier. Why did the London bombers follow a path of extreme violence? Who witnessed the early steps, the journey of the mind? We are 100% committed to the cause of Islam. We love death the way you love life. Newsnight has an exclusive interview with a man who knew the bombers well, a man who's told us about a mysterious Islamist radical who was central to the bombers' inner circle in Leeds. I thought it was mental. I thought it was really crackers, you know. It's outside of my sphere of experience. I was totally convinced that they were extremists in their views and beliefs. Five years on, the story of what led three young men from Beeston and Leeds to murder 52 people in London largely lies buried in the silence which has characterised this community. Many people here knew the bombers very well, but few have been willing to speak out. I'm very forward, very aggressive. This man did give evidence to the inquest via a video link. He fears reprisals for speaking out, so we agreed to mask his face for this report. And a group of other guys, uh, yeah, McDade, Martin McDade, he was also there. A bunch Mark of Hargreaves was approached by a group of youth workers in Beeston who wanted him to work with disadvantaged kids. And this was a place that I met them. I was brought here. That was the office in the front. The back here, with the bars on the windows, was the back of the building. And this room here with the bars on was where I was sat. What was it like in there? Dingy, dark. We had, we had a single strip light to provide light. There was no natural light in there. It was stacked up high with boxes of paraphernalia from, uh, from the bookshop. Mark was a qualified mountain leader, and a youth worker called Sid asked him to run some courses for children at the Leeds Climbing Wall. I had meetings with Mohammed Sadiq Khan. He was asking me if I could organise and run a session for them giving the kids a taster of about rock climbing, basically. And the group he brought were young people, 14 to, say, 18-year-old local Asian youth. And they were quite well supported by uh, Mohammed Sadiq Khan. Was, so Sadiq Khan was there? He was, yes. He was there at every session. And what was his demeanour at the time? What did you make of him? Very friendly, outgoing, very passionate about working with young people in the area, believed in what he was doing, very capable. He was a well-respected member of the community, definitely. Mark carefully recorded all of his work appointments in his diary. He was soon asked by another youth worker called Martin McDade to organise another trip to the climbing wall. McDade was different from the group of British Pakistanis running the youth team. He was a white convert to Islam who claimed to have been in the Royal Marines and the Special Boat Squadron. What kind of man was he? Very serious, outspoken. When I first met him, he came across as uh, businesslike, very focused. Um, knew what he wanted, knew pretty much how to get there. But he, he was come across OK initially, he seemed OK. Martin McDade and Sadiq Khan were involved in running adventure weekends for Beeston youths. Unknown to Mark, the security service MI5 had McDade in their sights from 1998. In July 2001, they were watching as he attended a camping weekend here in the Lake District with more than 40 others. McDade was a suspected extremist and MI5 feared he might be trying to groom some of the others at the camp. McDade definitely wanted hardness training, some sort of, with a military bent to it, pushing people to the limits, making them work really hard, making them suffer. Basically, those were his words, he wanted them to suffer. Sadiq Khan was also on the Lake District camping trip. This image was recorded by a secret video camera installed in the barn, though MI5 says he was not named or identified at that time. We know at least five adventure weekends were placed under surveillance, and there were others, 
Newsnight obtained these photographs. Here, Shizad Tanweer is circled, and on this caving trip to the Yorkshire Dales, Martin McDade can be seen bending down. Even though Mark was a qualified mountain leader, he believes that Sadiq Khan and McDade were keeping him away from adventure trips like these. He thought they were still sounding him out about his views, and that suspicion grew one day in the office when he saw boxes of leaflets on the floor. The boxes of material stacked in the back, they were moving them, they were, they were bringing them in, stacking them up, and he reached into the box, took out the pamphlet and said, have a look at that. And what was it? It was a, a pamphlet describing and showing graphic images of people who had been maimed, killed, blown up, burnt, bodies. It was anti-Semitic, anti-Zionist, anti-American. On another occasion, he says McDade gave him a DVD. Some of the stuff was uh, showing people in training camps in Afghanistan. Some of the uh, video stuff, people jumping over barbed wire, crawling along, firing the AK-47s, that kind of tackle. And then it would show you pictures of martyrs, dead people who'd given their lives for the cause. And then it was saying, do your bit for Islam. You know, it was basically inviting people to, to step up, to martyr themselves. What did you make of it? I thought it was mental. I thought it was really crackers, you know. I didn't, it's outside of my sphere of experience, really. So that was given to you by a man who was meant to be leading a youth project. Yeah. Mark says Martin McDade was becoming more and more demanding about his own beliefs. He felt as if McDade and Sadiq Khan were grooming him. Every time I met them, the conversation would lean towards religion and then would become about the Quran, about Islam. That was a regular thing. So would he just talk about this once every couple of weeks or was it more regular than that? Or? It was daily. Daily? Daily, absolutely. Mark felt under intense psychological pressure, especially from McDade. Oh, he was very aggressive. He, was, he would get close. He'd, he'd start to invade your personal space, he would, and, and shout and froth a little bit at the mouth, yeah. There were also uh, audio cassettes that he'd play in the car that to me sounded like a call to arms. When I challenged him on this, of course, he told me that it was just passionate. The man's passionate about his beliefs. This was a preacher? Yeah, yeah, an Islamic preacher. Talking about what, roughly? Um, about his brother's suffering and how, how, how the rest of the Muslims must stand up to defend their brothers. For Mark, matters came to a head when Sadiq Khan and McDade asked him to lead them on an adventure trip to the Yorkshire Dales. On the way up, it was all very calm, very serious. You know, I was trying to make light of the trip with people, that wasn't happening. It was just, it was miserable for a start. And then the stuff about Islam came in. McDade, for instance, was again telling me that if you do not convert to Islam, you destined for hellfire for eternity. You will burn in hell. Once we arrived at the cave, we were excited, we were more relaxed. We'd spent an hour in the cave, by which point I've checked that everybody's comfortable. So I suggested that it would be a nice idea if we could uh, switch off our headlights and experience the darkness and listen to the sounds of the cave. It was at this point when one of them stepped up and said to me, uh, this is the darkness in your life, Mark. This is the darkness that you're experiencing without Islam, without Allah. Mark continued working with Sadiq Khan and McDay throughout 2002, but he says their behaviour was increasingly strange. They told him they were planning to go on the Muslim pilgrimage, the Hajj, which could have been a cover for travelling to Pakistan. And one day they disappeared. I had no communication, no information to say when they were coming back. I was just left in the lurch, essentially. Now, the massive unprofessionalism, the pressure with the proselytism, the fact that my gut feeling was saying there's something distinctly wrong here, I just walked. I, I wondered if it was about converting people to Islam, if, if they had a different agenda completely, taking vulnerable young men, exposing them to literature, to extremist views, testing them, see how far they were, they were prepared to go, and then grooming them with a view to, I don't know, perhaps sending them to Afghanistan.
So Mark left, glad to be away from the pressure to conform. The next time he saw Sadiq Khan was on the news after the London bombings. So what has happened to Martin McDade? Well, he disappeared from the Beeston area in 2005. Apparently shortly after this, he was teaching English at a private school in Oman. But from there, the trail goes cold. We did manage to contact his parents, who still live in Leeds, but they declined to say anything about their son. And the mystery surrounding Martin McDade, though, has left many people in Beeston suspicious about his role. I've been told that he, had some, he was very aggressive and he had some military experience. And then uh, I've been told he vanished. Nobody knows. And we don't even know whether he was arrested by the police or not. He, he should be found, he should be traced, and we need to get to the bottom of this, why it happened and why at our doorstep. McDade has previously denied preaching extremist ideology in a newspaper interview in 2005. A wealth of detail was disclosed to the coroner who will report tomorrow, including the fact that at the time he was working with Martin McDade in Beeston, Sadiq Khan had already trained in Afghanistan. He was well along the extremist path, but such is the nature of suicide operations that the full story will never be told. Richard Watson and Richard will be back tomorrow for a special edition of Newsnight at 7.30 following the release of the July 7th inquest report. And later we'll hear more testimony from those whose lives were changed by the bombings. Now, the coroner to the 7-7 inquest will report the findings of an exhaustive inquiry into the London bombings tomorrow. Once more, the focus will be on the radicalisation of the bombers' leader, Mohammed Sadiq Khan. Newsnight has an exclusive interview with a former colleague of Sadiq Khan, which sheds new light on the crucial years before the bombings when he was living in Leeds. Here's Richard Watson. We are at war and I'm a soldier. Why did the London bombers follow a path of extreme violence? Who witnessed the early steps, the journey of the mind? We are 100% committed to the cause of Islam. We love death the way you love life. Newsnight has an exclusive interview with a man who knew the bombers well, a man who's told us about a mysterious Islamist radical who was central to the bombers' inner circle in Leeds. I thought it was mental. I thought it was really crackers, you know. It's outside of my sphere of experience. I was totally convinced that they were extremists in their views and beliefs. Five years on, the story of what led three young men from Beeston and Leeds to murder 52 people in London. Recession. And what was his demeanour at the time? What did you make of him? Very friendly, outgoing, very passionate about working with young people in the area, believed in what he was doing, very capable. He was a well-respected member of the community, definitely. Mark carefully recorded all of his work appointments in his diary. He was soon asked by another youth worker called Martin McDade to organise another trip to the climbing wall. McDade was different from the group of British Pakistanis running the youth team. He was a white convert to Islam who claimed to have been in the Royal Marines and the Special Boat Squadron. What kind of man was he? Very serious, outspoken. When I first met him, he came across as uh, business-like, very focused. Um, was where I was sat. What was it like in there? Dingy, dark. We had, we had a single strip light to provide light. There was no natural light in there. It was stacked up high with boxes of paraphernalia from, uh, from the bookshop. Mark was a qualified mountain leader and a youth worker called Sid asked him to run some courses for children at the Leeds Climbing Wall. I had meetings with Mohammed Sadiq Khan. He was asking me if I could organise and run a session for them, giving the kids a taster of about rock climbing, basically. And the group he brought were young people, 14 to, say, 18-year-old local Asian youth, and they were quite well supported by uh, Mohammed Sadiq Khan. He was, so Sadiq Khan was there? He was, yes, he was there. London largely lies buried in the silence which has characterised this community. Many people here knew the bombers very well, but few have been willing to speak out. 
Um, very forward, very aggressive. This man did give evidence to the inquest via a video link. He fears reprisals for speaking out, so we agreed to mask his face for this report. And a group of other guys, uh, yeah, McDade, Matt and McDade, he was also there. A bunch Mark of Hargreaves was approached by a group of youth workers in Beeston who wanted him to work with disadvantaged kids. And this was a place that I met them. I was brought here. That was the office in the front. The back here, with the bars on the windows, was the back of the building. And this room here with the bars on.